Hello everyone and welcome to the 7th Hammer tutorial of the version 2 series. This tutorial will work for all Source Engine games. I am using Portal 2 authoring tools to complete this tutorial. Today we will be going over the Vertex Manipulation tool and Prefab Primitives. Let's go ahead and hop to it. Start off by getting your no draw texture. I have a small platform built and we're going to build a canopy on top of it. So we're going to start by making cylinder pillars. So I have my small little area where my cylinders are going to go. I'm going to start by in my top view making a box. And I'm positioning that box above the cylinder. And once that cylinder is the desired height, I'm making mine 160 units tall. I'm going to go over to the right here under primitives and categories and select cylinder. We'll see that this 8 has showed up. That is how many sides the cylinder will have when we create it. I'm going to change it to 12. Do note that the more sides you have, the more expensive this brush will be. Before we strike enter, we want to verify an option in Hammer. So we're going to go to Tools, Options, 2D Views. And then we're going to make sure that Reorientate Primitives on Creation in the Active 2D View. Make sure that's checked. Hit OK. Now we're going to position our cursor in the top 2D view and hit enter. It'll now create our cylinder and it looks pretty darn good. I'm now going to go ahead, use the dev textures to give it a texture. And uh, that should, that should do it. Now we just need to go ahead and copy this to the other four pillars. I'm just going to use the shift drag function to copy this to the other four pillars and we're good. Now we have our cylinder pillars up top. Now I would like to have some arches connect these. This will be relatively simple. All we have to do is go back to having our no draw texture and in one of our side views we're going to create a brush. The brush needs to be perfectly square. Mine's going to be 96 by 96. We don't really care about the other 2D views so much right now as much as this one 2D view. Then we're going to change cylinder to arch. The 8 is still there, but we get an additional dialog prompt when we use the arch prefab tool. Go ahead and hit enter, and you'll get this arch properties preview. I'm going to set my wall width down to 10. The number of sides that I want is 8. That's good and the arc is going to be 90 degrees. You can hit preview at any time to get an idea of what's going to be generated in this little preview box here. Once you're happy with your results, go ahead and click OK. Now we have our arch. I'm just going to size it down in the top view here. All right, perfect. And now I'm just going to go ahead and put it into place atop one of these pillars. The reason I made wall width 10 is because it will make it twice that and the pillars are 20 width. So now if you'll notice when we're trying to put this on the pillar it won't go on grid. The way around this is using the vertex manipulation tool. So we're going to hit shift V to open the vertex manipulation tool and we'll get all of these grab points, the yellow and white ones. Simply in your top view, drag a box to select them all and then zoom in. Grab one of the corner vertex points and with snap to grid off we're going to drag it around and then position it back onto the grid. So if we were to make our grid smaller, we'll see that it's now on grid there. So now with our arch in place, we just need it to go to the left as well as down, and then we just need to copy it over. So I'm going to use the shift drag method and then rotate it and put it into place overlapping the other arc. But we do not want these intersecting brushes, so we need to use the clipping tool to get rid of them. So with the clipping tool of shift X, going to draw a diagonal line, keeping the bulk of the prefab arch and deleting the part that intersects into the other brush. But it needs to be at a 45 degree angle and then do the same thing to the other arc. Now using the hotkey of H to quick hide an object, I can hide it to verify that this has a 45 degree cut in it and this has a 45 degree cut in the other side. Now pressing the U key to unhide all quick hidden objects. I get both of my arches back. Now I'm going to select both of these arches and hit Control T to make them a funk detail as we learned about that in a previous tutorial and we want to make sure these are funk detailed. Now we're going to shift drag this over and using the hotkey of Control L I'm going to flip this horizontally in my top 2D view. Now I'm going to select both of these, shift drag them down and once they're down I'm going to use the hotkey of Control I to flip them in my top 2D active view. 
Now they're in place, and I just need a small brush to connect them together. So let's go ahead, select our block tool, draw a brush to connect these together. Now before we hit enter, we need to change arch back to block. If you don't do that, you'll get an arch here, and that can be mildly annoying. Now with both of these in place, I'm going to use two different commands. I'm going to use Control c which is copy, and then Control shift v for paste special. This will allow me to paste in, in an infinite amount of items and apply rotation to them accumulatively. So, I just want one copy, and it's going to start at the center of the original, but I want it to rotate 90 degrees on the z-axis. This will automatically put these brushes in place on the other side where they're currently missing. So I click OK, and there we go. They're automatically in place for me. We need to make sure that they are a funk detail. Cool. And now I think we need a little canopy on top of our little thing here. To do this, I'm going to draw a brush that will occupy one-fourth of the total space that the canopy will use. I'm doing this because I'm going to create a detailed one-fourth piece of the canopy and then just copy and paste it to the other side and apply rotation. So once I have a brush about like so, 8 units high, um, 118 by 118, it's one-fourth of the total space, I hit enter, and I'll get this brush. So now I'm going to use the vertex manipulation tool. The vertex manipulation tool has a couple limitations. The first one is that you cannot create convex objects. So for instance, if we were to press shift V to get this convex object and select this yellow dot in the center, we're able to move around these points. You'll also notice that if you hit Control z you can't undo. You have to exit morph mode to undo the changes. If I want to undo this, I have to select the selection tool and then hit Control z and then I can go back. If I hit Shift-V, let's say I select these points in the corner here, and I move just them upwards. This is now a convex item instead of concave. Source Engine cannot do convex objects. We need to split this into triangles, otherwise it will create an invalid brush. Before we split this, we want to undo that to bring it back to its flat state. Now, with our clipping tool selected, we're just going to make a diagonal cut, keeping both sides. And now we're able to use the vertex manipulation tool on this without an issue. So go ahead and press Shift V, and in your top view, select the two points. I'm going to move these up some to create kind of a diagonal arch. So now we have this one side that comes up, and now we're going to do the same thing to the other brush, making it come up to the same point where it meets. And now we have this little angled arch piece, which is exactly what we wanted. Now we're just going to hit Control g to group an object. So now if I click off it and click back onto it, it's grouped together. I'm going to use Shift-Drag to copy it over to the right, Control l to flip horizontally, Select them both, drag them down, and then Control i to flip them vertically. And now we have our little, our little roof type deal here. So now, we just need to put it in position so it looks like it's actually being supported. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to make little pillars come up and touch the top of this. So I'm just going to hit the brush tool, and then draw a brush, going to the top. Hit the enter key, and then using my clipping tool, going to clip away the parts of the brush that would normally intersect. As much as we can, we want to remove intersecting brushes. While in the clipping tool, you can hold down the shift key to start a new cut. Now with that in place, I'm just going to put it into the four other places where it needs to be. Now I'm going to copy this another method, and I'm going to rotate it a different way too. So I'm going to shift drag this off and then move it right back into position, so there's two copies here. Now I'm going to open the transformation dialog by pressing Control M. I'm able to move, scale, or rotate any objects by a certain value in any X, Y, or Z field. I need to rotate on the Z axis by 90 degrees and then click Enter. That will once again put it automatically into place on the two other sides. You need to verify that they're funk details, which they are but I need to funk detail my roof, so we'll select all those and do that. And now that's good. Let's go ahead and create some spikes really quick, as those are another prefab that we can use in the creator. I'm going to have a spike pit down here. Primitives. Spike spike works a lot like the cylinder tool, as it gives you the amount of sides right underneath it. 
going to give my spikies eight sides and then hit enter. So this is our spike, and I'm just going to put him into the spiky pit. Now using the shift arrow key method, I'm just going to make lots of spikes. So now we have lots of spikes down there, and we want to make sure that these are funk detail. So control T, funk detail. And now let's say we want to extend this pillar out. To do this, we're just going to use the Vertex Manipulation tool. So, these are already a funk detail, so I can't select a single brush with the current grouping method. The way to do this is select solids under Select on the right. This will allow you to select just a single solid of any brush that's in your level. Now, I click the top and hit Shift-V to open the Vertex Manipulation dialog. For sanity's sake, I'm going to hide the spikes down here at the bottom. Now I'm just going to extend this out some, and now we're going to put an arch on this extended piece to make a little diving board, if you will, to the spike pit. To do that, we need to split some faces here. With the yellow dot selected, press Control F. You'll see that created two more yellow dots and a white dot here. The white dots move freely, so I'm just going to split these a few more times so I have an equal number on both sides. I'm going to make a box over them to select them all and turn my grid down some, and I'm just going to extend them forward. And there we go. Now we have a slightly curved ramp that you can see right there. Perfect. I believe this little diving board should have a little supporter piece underneath it. So I'm going to use the solids here and clear out four spikes. Now, with those spikes gone, I'm going to use my block tool and change my primitives to cylinder. Now I'm going to block out where I'd like my cylinder to be. And now my cylinder's right there, which is good. But I think it should fan out at the bottom to have more support. So I'm going to use the clipping tool to cut horizontally and keep both sides. With the vertex tool and the bottom cylinder selected, zoom out and select just the bottom vertices. Now, press Alt-E. This will open the scale dialog in the Vertex Manipulation tool. You'll be presented with a circle inside the center of all your vertices. If you move this, all pieces will scale out from this point. If you play with it some, you'll see what happens. But with everything in its default position, we're going to just click Scale and just click the up arrow. And we'll see that the bottom starts to fan out. So I'm just going to turn the scale up until I'm happy with its position. That's good. Now I'm going to use Shift S or the selection tool to deselect that and we can see that it automatically fans out exactly how we wanted it to. Now you may have noticed that there are some other prefabs that are in the primitives area. If we go over here we'll see Taurus and Wedge. Taurus I don't recommend using as it creates brushes in a very very bad manner that's very wasteful. And Wedge is just stupid because you can use the clipping tool to create a wedge with more control. Now I'm just going to texture everything really quick, then we'll compile the level and go in game and check it out. Alright, now that I believe that everything that should be funk detailed is funk detailed, I'm just going to verify this. I'm just going to verify this by going over to my biz group selection, changing the tab to auto, and unselecting funk detail. Now we'll see what is left is not funk detail, but these pillars, these should be funk detail. So I'll group those and make them funk detail, as well as the cylinder at the bottom. Now we'll turn Funk Detail off completely, turn it back on again, and then turn it off. And we'll see that there's no Funk Detail left, and this is what the level should look like. So I'm going to turn Funk Detail back on, and compile the level on Normal Normal, and we'll load up our game. Now with our game loaded, we're going to press the tilde key to open our console, map, map name, and hit the end of the game. Alright, now with the map loaded, we're in game. You may see that there are shadows and lighting in this level. We'll get to that in the very next tutorial. We'll see we have our arches, as well as our vertex edited ceiling. Um, our curved bit on the diving board here. And our spiky spikes in the spiky bit. There are some nice spikes. I like them. Our cylinder. 
And that should actually about do it. And there's one last thing that a few of you have asked me to do. So let's go ahead and do it and hammer really quick as a quick afterthought. For this, we're going to delete our piece down there and put spikes back. And now, using the vertex manipulation tool, if we were to just... Oh, let me hide the spikes so we can see what's going on. If we were to use the selection tool and just pull this it would slowly deform our arch, which I don't want. So I'm going to use the vertex manipulation tool, select these points, and then use the arrow key to nudge them out. So now we're going to put a circular hole in this extender. This is something that a lot of people have a lot of trouble with, or they'll use the carve tool, which you should never ever use. So we're going to start by using the clipping tool and clipping out an area for our hole, just as if it were a window. All right, now with our hole created, we want to select our no draw texture and then create a box in here. And now we're going to make the box be one fourth the total size that the circle will be. Now we're going to go to our prefab and select arch and hit enter in our top view. We'll now get our arch preview and I'm going to turn the number of sides down to four and hit preview. 90 degree angle, four sides, eight width preview. Hit OK, and we'll get our arch set 64 by 64. Position it in the respective corner, and now we're going to use the vertex tool. We're going to grab this back point here and move it to the corner. We're going to grab this point here on these two brushes and move it to the wall, and then we're going to do the same thing on this top brush. With the entire arch selected that's now fitted to the corner, drag it over, flip it, copy them both, drag them down, and flip them again. Now go ahead and apply your texturing. And lastly, make it a function detail. And run that. We'll load up and we'll check out our hole. All right, we'll walk forward to our sacrificial pit. And there's our hole. You'll notice the spikes are gone. It is because I neglected to unhide them when I compiled. Now, using the hide tool is a very easy way to troubleshoot troublesome brushes or entities in a level. So keep that in mind. So we have our hole, and it looks fine and dandy. We've also not destroyed our arch when we use the vertex tool to do after the thought editing. So I hope this tutorial helped you create more complex geometry with the primitives prefab creator, as well as put holes in the ground, and put that function detail stuff to use. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with more source engine mapping practices, as well as more V2 tutorials. Thanks for watching. And happy mapping.